Jimmy Vegas here and in this video I'm going to talk to you about ambient occlusion. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with everything I upload on video game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's start discussing. So what is ambient occlusion? A lot of people may not have even heard of the term ambient occlusion, however they will have noticed it many times throughout video gaming history. More so I would say in the 21st century rather than the 20th century, simply because uh, technology has evolved, graphics have evolved uh, since the year 2000 quite rapidly. So in its simplest terms, Ambient occlusion is a way of creating shadows and darkness in places where light would basically not be able to get to quite so easily. So things like in the corners down here and along here. So depending on how you want your game to look, ambient occlusion is going to be quite strong or fairly weak, depending on the sort of environment you're working in. So ambient occlusion is part of post-processing, so in order to get uh, some ambient occlusion I'll see, we need to create a profile. If you've already got a profile, that is completely fine. I'm going to create a fresh post-processing profile as I'm only going to be dealing with the ambient occlusion here because that's what we're talking about. So this one right here. So if I attach my script onto my camera, obviously we're not going to see any difference right now simply because we haven't done anything with the post-processing profile. But if we were to tick on the ambient occlusion, you would instantly see an effect. You should be able to see that it is darker here and here, but not here. So if you were to take a look around wherever you're sat now and you look down to the floor or down in some corners, you know, where the two walls are joined, you'll notice that there is some slightly darker uh, areas there. That is where light struggles to get in as easily as it does on a flat surface. Now, obviously, the ambient occlusion can be changed. It can be intensified, as we can see. Again, this is all down to how you want your scene to look. And if I go on my game view, just to make it look a little bit better, uh, we can see here, this is ambient occlusion in effect. If we were to reduce the intensity, obviously, no ambient occlusion would occur. Now, in normal situations, everyday life that we live, for reality's sake, ambient occlusion is going to be rather low. For something like a horror game you're creating, ambient occlusion would probably benefit from being much higher. In this case, it can go as high as four, but that may be too much. So, maybe two. Obviously, the radius is going to affect it as well. Too much radius is just going to send it haywire because that's utterly ridiculous but the radius will basically increase the size of this occlusion right here. So we can increase it slightly and you can see how much light is missing. Now this entire scene gives the impression that it is quite light, it's quite vibrant, so you wouldn't necessarily see so much ambient occlusion in these corners. So for example, this scene would be fairly low as such. If we were to, let's say, turn off the light, uh, make it look absolutely crazy. So it's a bit of a darker, eerie scene. Then in this case, we would possibly increase that ambient occlusion to give it a dark, eerie kind of look. But again, with a radius, always be careful. Too much radius can destroy it. Too little radius would obviously mean there is nothing at all. So just balance those quite nicely. The other settings don't necessarily work um, to your advantage. Again, they can because it's post-processing, it can be quite a drain on the system. So I've always found just to keep the downsampling ticked and the sample count at medium. You could change it to low if you wanted to, but it starts to look a little bit blocky, pixely, I guess. Or you could set it as high if you're aiming for, you know, quite high strength PCs. But like I said, I've always kept it as medium. I always feel that that is the best. Uh, option to take in this case and obviously the high precision is well if you hover over it there you go I'm, I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs here it tells you right there but just like everything else with Unity it tells you but I've always found ambient occlusion in dark and horror games to be really really important and really really uh, vital to the game's look so yeah in a nutshell that's all ambient occlusion is it is a way of producing an effect where light would otherwise struggle to get into. 
So guys, I hope that's helped a little bit. Uh, I do get asked a lot of different things about post-processing. What's this? What's that? What's the other? So I figured I may as well try and break it down a little bit. So you'll probably see a couple more videos like this. Uh, yeah, hope it's helped. If you want to know any more, if you want to know any more at all, just on anything on video game development, let me know in the comments below. As I said earlier, don't forget to click subscribe and the bell icon because you can stay up to date with everything I upload. Guys, thank you very much for watching.